Today's topic is uh, from last year, the uh, the MGM Grand Casino chain uh, was hit by a cybercrime group. Uh, over the course of six days, this group burrowed deep enough into the MGM network infrastructure to implant ransomware, get at least some personal data from casino customers, and effectively just shut down connection, you know, connection and operations for several days in a row. I know they said that they were, you know, writing people's totals on pieces of paper and stuff like that. And it led to a loss of an estimated $100 million at least. So to get our listeners caught up, can you walk us through like a brief version of the events in this week in, in 2023 and what made this attack unusual? Yeah, because this is a cyber crew, I'll give a little bit of context around that specific event, because it's important to think about the industry and how the industry was prepared or responding. Um, it turned out, you know, earlier the, uh, earlier in the summer, shall we say, uh, Okta uh, issued a post on their blog and said, hey, we're starting to see certain types of activity that might lead us to think that this is a risk. Mm-hmm. And so everyone's like, hmm, this is sort of interesting. Why that must, must something, a lot must have happened for Okta to feel like that statement needed to be made. And then there was a new, there's a, an SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission, has a cyber disclosure rule that was set to go into effect at the end of the year. It's in effect now. It wasn't yet. Um, but MGM, like other organizations, said, you know, we're going to be proactive and we're going to follow what we know is an upcoming reporting requirement, which means once they become materially aware of a situation, um, they need to share publicly that that situation's happened. They don't necessarily have to do it in the middle of understanding what's going on or the crisis, but there's, there's some time limits and guidance around that. Mm-hmm. So the so MGM disclosed that and said, "Oh my gosh, what's going on?" It turned out at the same time MGM couldn't ignore what was going on because their their customers at casinos in Vegas and elsewhere were experiencing it firsthand. Yeah, and so we later kind of understand what has happened to be uh, there's a particular group that goes by different names, but one of them is sort of Scattered Spider. And they claimed accountability for this particular action. And they got really good at taking advantage of the weakness we have in this world of calling the help desk and asking to have your account reset. Mm-hmm. So they went and researched an employee at, um, you know, at MGM, you know, conceptually their LinkedIn page, found out what they did, found out what the type of work they did, um, got data that was sort of answers to the security questions. They might have taken over the person's phone number, which basically means you call your mobile carrier and you do the same thing, which because the telcos also struggle with, uh, oh, hi, it's me. I got a new phone. Can you please transfer my phone number to the new one? Yeah. How do they verify it to you except for the same security questions? Uh, Um, So they took over the phone number, then called the help desk at MGM, pretending to be an employee, happy to be an employee who had good access credentials. Uh, They were able to answer the security questions. In fact, turns out they even got some of them wrong. But that's what we consider to be social engineering Close and enough, yeah, right? to convince, <laughs> right, yeah. convince that help desk engineer that they were the rightful account owner and they had to get back to work and they needed their account reset. Mm-hmm. The help desk person did it. The bad actor then went in and caused sort of all of this damage across the organization, eventually ransomware and, you know, a whole bunch of other things, you know, almost yeah. system by system once they were inside. They, they moved really fast, it seems like, didn't they? They were like, they, it was it was very, it was very well organized at that point, it sounds like. You know, was it, it's you know we've learned more and more from from a lot of people involved in the incident. But um, most recently, the Wall Street Journal actually just did a big investigative report yeah. on this. Uh, you know, kind of a month of reporting, some really thoughtful work there, and so it goes into a little bit more detail. Uh, but yes, I mean, it was uh, you know a, a huge, huge issue uh, for MGM, and the down impact was massive. Mm-hmm. People couldn't check in; the reservation systems were offline. Mm-hmm. You know, we had government officials showing up for conferences in Vegas, writing their credit card numbers on post its at check. In uh, yeah. like just unacceptable things. Oh yeah, but you know what was so odd was this was only one of many, and mm-hmm. so what continued then? Um, we later learned that some reports have you know up to two hundred and thirty organizations were also impacted alone in the, the last couple of months of last year, and those mm-hmm. numbers have just skyrocketed. Yeah, basically this bad actor group and others are now targeting other companies, just doing the exact same thing. Yeah, uh, and so back to our Octa story to complete it. You know, Okta came back and said after the MGM attack happened, they were aware of this sort of a vulnerability. And their advice was to do something called visual verification, which means a little bit like our calls. Jump on a video conferencing platform and, you know, see who you're talking to. Maybe yeah. ask them to hold up their ID, but see who they are. See mm-hmm. if they match maybe a photo you have of them or what you know they look like. And then you can proceed and reset their account. Right. Trouble with that, obviously, is it's very time consuming. Uh, it's expensive. It's frustrating. Uh, yep. And then it turns out in the world of deep fakes, more to discuss. Um, oh, it's not always accurate. Oh, my stomach hurts already. Uh, OK, so, um, yeah, I mean, you you mentioned, well, I, I guess I, I think you're already sort of uh, explaining this here. But um, you said that there were a couple of key things that could have shut down this 
attacked before it got out of hand. Can you talk about some of those fail safe points that that the uh, the bad actors blew through? Well, a, a lot of the detection, you, you sort of wanted to detect when these things happen from vulnerabilities, have credentials been used, you know, is, is someone who has not normally accessed certain systems begin to access certain systems. And so certain companies have detection and response me measures in place to identify some of those points. But I, I would argue that the perimeter, you know, getting inside is really all about identity. Mm -hmm. And if you do things like put MFA and you put a big deadbolt on your front door, but then around back you have, you know, a post-it with the code to your garage and you can kind of open the garage by typing that in, like, it doesn't matter how big the deadbolt was on the front door. Mm -hmm. And for MGM and for a lot of companies right now, they've gone that effort. M MFA was the best practice, yeah. you know, ideally not SMS or two factor, but ideally setting up some kind of an authenticator app or a token was the right way to do it. And Unfortunately, MFA has this huge vulnerability and weak point when it comes to recovery. And that's mm. what we saw firsthand with the MGM attack. Okay, well, speak, speak more on that then, because, yeah, I, I, I think we do have that that kind of feeling or certain security departments have that feeling of like, well, we got we got MFA in place. Uh, we can sort of put our feet up or that that's, you know, that that's been sufficiently padlocked or whatever. But, you know, because you have the, you know, the, 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 the item you own, the item, you know, or the item you are, you know, like. What what are what what are the um what are the sort of soft spots, especially you said specifically around like a like a, an account reset? Um, this also really are the humans, you know, mm -hmm. humans are her greatest strength. And, you know, the, the worker, that knowledge worker who has access to their email, they're really important because they can contribute as a human. Um, the helpless person comes to work probably to try and be helpful. I think that's kind of the nature of that work. Um, but if every help desk conversation doesn't begin with how can I help, but more I need to identify you or who are yes. you, then you've made helpless people sort of identity in investigators or interrogators. Mm -hmm. And that's not a role anyone wants to be in. It's bad for them. It's bad for the end user or the employee yeah. in this case who's calling. And so it, it, by the way, it's also not secure, it turns out. Because the nature of us being human makes us open to who's your manager? Oh, you know, I, I was just on vacation and I had a reorg and I'm not yeah. sure. And that's why, gosh, I got to get back into the email to see. You know, it, it makes us want to connect with that person. It makes us empathize. And then it, it leaves a subjective question as to whether or not to reset that person's access. Yeah. And so the, the very nature that we have not provided those help desk reps better tools mm -hmm. is the nature of the vulnerability today. Have you seen WorkBytes, the new security awareness training series from InfoSec? Our team produced this series with three E's in mind, making security awareness training entertaining, engaging, and educational. Just go to infosecinstitute.com slash free to learn more about this hilarious office comedy. And hey, let us know what you think about it.